Hello guys, PK here. In this video, I'm walking you through a secret ratio property of a cubic function that no one would have taught you before. Many of you probably know all the properties of a quadratic function, like symmetry, focus, and directrix, and so on. However, I'm pretty sure that there will not be many people who know about this particular property of a cubic function that will help high school students, college students, high school math teachers, or college math professors learn or teach a cubic function with a very simple but very powerful technique for many applications. I've been using this property a lot with many math problems with a cubic function either in pre-calculus or calculus courses. So how about I show you this ratio property right away? Now we have a graph of a cubic function. There is a local max, inflection point, and local min. If you draw two parallel straight lines through this local max and local min, and also draw three perpendicular lines through the local max, local min, and inflection point, you will see this beautiful ratio property. For those two lines, say the horizontal line passing through the local min, we have one to one, to one ratio, or one to two ratio. Same as the horizontal line passing through the local max, we have one to one to one ratio, or one to two ratio. This ratio property is very useful and powerful for many applications involving a cubic function. Let me first show you a brief proof of this ratio property. So we have this graph of a cubic function and the horizontal line passing through the local max. Then say we have this function f of x as x minus alpha square times x minus beta plus c. Then we can say this x coordinate is alpha and this x coordinate as beta and this horizontal straight line as c. Let's say these two points as capital letter A and C. Then we can talk about the derivative of f of x as 2 times x minus alpha times x minus beta plus x minus alpha square. If you factor x minus alpha out, then this is the same as x minus alpha times 3x minus 2 beta minus alpha. And if you set this as equal to 0, then we can say the roots is now alpha and 2 times beta plus alpha divided by 3. Let's now draw the perpendicular line through the local min and the intersection of it with the line C as capital letter B. Then the x coordinate at the point B is then 2 times beta plus alpha divided by 3. Now let's talk about this 2 beta plus alpha by 3. This is the value as 2 to 1 internal division point between alpha and beta. So that is why the line segment AB to the line segment BC is 2 to 1. How amazing. Now I'm taking you back to the classroom with me, presenting an example of how this ratio property is helping you solve the math problem more easily than the other solution. You will see the beauty of this. This ratio property is the must-know technique if you are in high school students, college students, high school math teachers, or college math professors. So much helpful. Okay, we have an interesting simple example here. We have x cubed minus 12x squared plus 36x minus k is equal to zero. Then the question is, what's minimum integer value of k to have one positive real root and two complex roots? Let me add k to both sides first to make it x cubed minus 12x minus squared plus 36x minus equal to now k. And then let me call this cubic function part as f of x. Then we need to work on f of x is now equal to k. To have one positive real root and two complex roots, right? So let's talk about this f of x. Seems like we have the combo factor of the x. So your f of x is equal to now then x times x squared minus prof x plus 36. Close your parenthesis. Looks like your parenthesis part is a perfect square, x minus 6 square. So that's why it is now x times x minus 6 square. Okay, then first of all, let me draw this f of x. Then if you set this f of x as equal to 0, then it seems like we have two roots, right? 
x is now equal to zero, and then x is equal to negative six. Okay, so that's why we can draw your cubic function looks like this. We have a bounce when x is equal to six here. Okay, we have zero. Okay, this is a graph of your f of x. Okay, then let's compare the cases. Case number one, if you know this property that I talked about in the beginning of the video. So the distance from this intersection to the local min is six. So that's why one to two ratio should be a point. So that's why this is the point two, and then we have two, four. So that's why one to two ratio is now applied, right? Okay, so the local max y value is going to be obtained if you plug it in two to your x of f of x. So that's why f of now two. Plug it in two to the x, then you will be having 32. So that's why now this is y is equal to 32. We're talking about the minimum integer value of the case so that we have one positive real root and two complex roots. That should be looking just like this. So that's why that k value is equal to 33. Solve pretty quickly. Okay, then case number two, if you do not know about this property, then usually what you do is you get your derivative of this f of x. f of x logs now x times x minus six squared. Getting your derivative of this f of x and f times of x is now the product rule, right? So it is x minus six squared. 2x times x minus 6. Okay, then it looks like it is the same as x minus 6 times 3x minus 6. Set this is equal to 0. So we can easily check that x is equal to 2. It is going to be the local maximum. So that you can plug it in 2 to the x to get the value of the y as 32. So that you can say your k has to be 33 as the minimum integer value. But then again, like I said, if you know about this property, then you can solve the question really quickly. Okay, I just introduced this one interesting property about the cubic function in this video. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.